couple of times. And um, I'm one of the few people, I think, in the mainstream press that's been looking at this uh, phenomenon of peer-to-peer -peer lending because when I joined the FT in 2008, um, I started looking at this sort of stuff because it was the crisis and I thought it was always very interesting and collaborative funding models, cooperative banking. Um, I thought it would be the future. But then I found out that nobody else really was very interested in it. And when I talked to bankers or central bankers, they didn't really think very much of it. They didn't think it was a phenomenon at all. And then now, three, and three, four years later, I keep hearing about it. And the phenomenon is definitely growing. And I, I believe um, it will be the future. And every time I speak to a central banker and they say, oh, well, it's just insignificant. It's not, it's not worthwhile at all. Um, I'm like, well, I think you'll be wrong. Anyway, so I'm really interested and uh, happy to be here to hopefully be one of the sort of few journalists who's uh, kind of committed to covering this. Um, and we're representing, um, I think we've got five different, uh, well, four major sort of representations of what's happening in the peer-to-peer -peer lending arena. I thought the best thing to do is if each one of you quickly introduces what you bring to the model, and very briefly, how you differ from each other, basically, and the key um, selling point for, you, for your business. So why don't you start? Hi, everyone. So I'm uh, Charles Sedley. I'm the co-founder of, uh, of Prédunion. So Prédunion is a peer-to-peer -peer lending platform that operates in, uh, in France. It allows, basically, investors that have money to invest to finance directly uh, consumer loans that are subscribed by, uh, by uh, borrowers. So ba basic, basically, the, uh, the borrowers uh, have lower rates on our platforms. And in the, mean in the meantime, uh, lenders uh, enjoy higher rates than, uh, no than from normal products. Uh, we've launched the platform 17 months ago, so in December 2011. Uh, we have issued, uh, as of today, almost 23 million euros in credits, and last month we did uh, 3 million. So the, the trend is, uh, is quite good, the growth as well, so we're very happy. Great, thank you. And Vincent, if you could give us a quick brief. Um, so my name is Vincent, uh, I'm the CEO uh, of two platforms of crowdfunding, one which is existing since three years now, called Kisses Bang Bang, which is a uh, platform dedicated to creativity and innovation. Uh, it works on uh, the reward-based system, or don contre don, en français, ou don contre partie. Um, and we just launched another one uh, 10 days ago, called Hello Merci, which is a peer-to-peer -peer lending, so the prêt entre particuliers, which is a, a social way of to see things, because you don't have any interest rates uh, for the lenders. The idea behind it is to borrow money to each other to make sure that we can in birth to uh, our projects. So we are both on platform, non-speculative platforms. Thank you. Okay. Get so tangled I'm up. Yeah, yeah, sorry. It's a trap, by the way. So I'm Alexandre, I work at La Banque Postale, which is one of the biggest retail banks in France, uh, responsible for branding and communication. Um, and uh, we collaborate with uh, Vincent, uh, throughout the uh, Kiss Kiss Bang Bang platform um, to give to our customers a new way to experience uh, uh, the way to, to finance their project. And we set up this collaboration two years ago now, and we're very proud of what it, uh, what it has done. Because, yeah, uh, we give a new perspective to our customers, and that's what we want. Uh, I'm Francois Carbon, uh, co founder of Alexago. Alexago is an equity crowdfunding platform, uh, which is now one year old. Um, it's almost one million invested in, in startup companies, and uh, the change is a change in the relationship between shareholders and founders. Uh, the shareholders of companies uh, which are on the website uh, can be clients, providers, business partners, and it totally changes the relationship. We also made our first first uh, capital raise on the platform. So we have Alexago has 30 shareholders, uh, which are clients, partners, and uh, it's 
communal resource. And Jana, you're an example of somebody who has uh, used the kiss, the kiss, kiss bank. Yeah, exactly. So I will tell you the conclusion. Why don't you exactly? Why don't you give us um, a rundown of <laughs> your experience? That's a good place to start, I think. Okay. So um, I I had an idea to open a cafe, and uh, it's you know you need some investment for that. So um, I have one of my best friend, she she was willing to help me with that. So we put the money together. Then uh, of course it was not enough. So we also got a bank loan. But uh, to complete our investment, um, I was thinking of crowdfunding because I knew the system before. I have also a friend who helped uh, to finance this project this way. Uh, so I was thinking, okay, why well, do you want to try that? And um, um, so I knew Kiss Kiss Bang Bang because I did a business school and Kiss, Kiss, Kiss Bang Bang was uh, uh, presenting itself there one <coughs> once during one uh, uh, conference. Um, so yeah, we had a lot of fun uh, doing the video and writing about our project and then we uploaded it on the website <coughs> and uh, it worked out and we opened our cafe uh, just a week ago, so uh, it works. <laughs> so how does it work now, now that you've raised the money? How, what's the next uh, phase in your relationship with, your, with, with, with the finance? Yeah, so there are uh, rewards. We uh, set um, some <coughs> amounts and the rewards. Um, so for example, uh, just to give you a concrete example, for 30 euros, or let's say uh, for 10 euros, you, you get a postcard with uh, like, uh, some personalized you know, text. Um, and every next amount, you get um, the previous reward plus something else. So for example, for 30 euros, you get a postcard plus you get a free muffin which will be called uh, by your name. So we build it like a muffin uh, uh, bean. <laughs> so like naming stars, basically. Yeah. yeah. To have your name forever on a muffin. And then the highest amount was uh, 300 euros. And that's all the previous rewards, which is like a branch. And there is one um, uh, apron. And plus the dinner with founders of uh, our cafe. So and then. We set the objective. Um, basically, uh, the idea was to finance um, the coffee machine because we wanted to get a very good coffee, and this is quite a high investment. And also, the oven is another uh, important thing for us because we are baking everything um, uh, at our place. And also, I forgot to say it's gluten free, everything is gluten free. Um, so, these two uh, things were quite high investments, um, and I think it. We would be able to open the cafe even with, if we didn't ask for money from people, but we would never be able to get the, the coffee that we have today. Like it really helped us to make it how it is today. And uh, what I'm interested in specifically as well is how does <coughs> using this initiative, how does that help your debt profile? Does that make it more manageable in terms of your future liabilities and, and in terms of costs and operating costs? Yeah, uh, because we, uh, so we asked for a bank loan, which is actually uh, combined <coughs> with, the, um, with the loan from one public organism in France, and there is a maximum budget, so we would have to go over that budget, and it would be uh, a bit more difficult. So this, yeah, it, it really helps, and um, uh, yeah. Well, I think that's a really good example of how these initiatives can empower small businesses. But um, obviously, it's not just about small businesses. Um, it's about loans to individuals. Um, and Charles, perhaps you might um, give us your perspective on, on that side of it. So obviously, nowadays, it's hard to get loans anyway. And um, banks are unwilling to lend. Um, they did a bad job of risk assessment. How is it that you can protect people's money, people who engage in your business uh, and how do you ensure that the risk assessment is done correctly? So we have a, a good practice at Prélunion which is to, uh, to ask for more credentials to our uh, boards because it's not, I mean, we, we do more anti-fraud checking, more solvency checking thanks to those uh, credentials. Why we do this? Because it's not our money that we, that we lend to, uh, to boards, it's our lenders' money. 
So we have to be very cautious. We have to uh, to make sure that bores are not doing fraud or. or so are your standards higher than the uh, the banks? Uh, in terms of score, not. But in terms of uh, checking uh, credentials, uh, anti-fraud uh, procedures, yes. Okay, and uh, presumably in Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, it's a bit of a different structure because it isn't the same sort of level of risk assessment because you're, it's more of a crowdfunding uh, platform. How, so how, how do you approach this? The, the thing is that w when you work on, on the reward based system or, or, or non-profit lending system, then you're out of the banking monopoly. So f it's much easier to, not to get your own rules, but at least to be you know, free from the so the big pressure from the, the rules dedicated to monopoly. So I mean, the system on, on both of those platforms is like the risk is shared by everybody. I mean, when you give somebody when you give money to somebody, I mean the risk is that this guy won't be able to do the project exactly like it was supposed to do. But uh, once again, I mean the, the the average gift or donation for those projects is fifty euros. So it means that you know that you take the risk with these fifty euros that maybe nothing happened. And when it comes to lending, it goes the same. When you're borrowing 100 euros to one of your friends, never sure to get the money back. And on those kind of platforms, I mean, the, 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 the meaning behind this is to share this risk again. When, you, when you're borrowing 100 euros to somebody who is uh, building a coffee, maybe, I mean, the story won't, won't get that well, and then you, you won't have your money back. Although, uh, that, so that is a risk that you need to assume, that we assume all together. Although, if, if if you reach a uh, percentage of bad stories, then the platform are just dead, of course, because the reputation is getting bad. Everybody knows that the projects are not well. Everybody knows that the money is not given back. And then those platforms should explode. And after three years or four years on those kind of businesses all, all over the world, we can see that it doesn't happen. Bad story doesn't happen. And for uh, one simple reason is that when you are crowdfunding a project like this, I mean, you speak to start with, with your first circle, that people you know. I mean, when you're borrowing money to the people you know, when you ask money from the people you know to do a documentary, I mean, if you don't give back the money, or if you don't give the project at the end of the day, I mean, the next Christmas or next birthday parties will be really, really hard because nobody will speak to you anymore. And the thing is that this social pressure can be uh, a bit strange for everybody, but that's the main reason explaining that those platforms are really 100% functioning really well because uh, the rate of uh, failure is really, 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 really low. And to give you an example, on Kisses Bank Bank, after like close to 3,000 projects, we don't have one complaint, only one complaint about non-project. It means that most of them, I mean, all of the projects, more or less, are giving the rewards on time or maybe a little bit less, but as soon as the money is circulating between uh, people we know, or people we know by somebody we know, complaints are not coming out. And, and this, those systems, when we're talking of non-speculative platforms, are based on social pressure. That's very interesting. And I, I don't know how many of you are familiar with David Graeber's book, Debt, the first 5,000 years of it. Um, it's very anthropological. It's almost like we're going backwards back to those days when there was social pressure, your, your local bank manager knew you, and it wasn't just about your relationship with a faceless corporate, it was about who you were in the economy. So what has, why this change? What, like, any, any one of you, I mean, who, what, what has made such a difference? Why are we now able to do this, whereas five years ago, when there was already an internet structure, we, we weren't doing it so much? It's a parallel with the explosion of social networks. I mean, we're all social networks we get used right now to be connected to the rest of the world by seven contacts. It means that every time you move somewhere, I mean, let's say a uh, uh, seven part of the world know about what you do, mechanically. So it means that, I mean, those crowdfunding platforms are working really, really well because now people know how, how to be connected with each other. And when you're connected with each other publicly, it gives you a high pressure because you're on reputation and your e-reputation are on stake. Uh, and so we, we didn't create anything on crowdfunding platform. We just, thanks to social networks and this, this e-reputation and this pressure, just put some values all together that we do have in the humanity since ages, which is sharing, empathy, trust, transparency. 
which are a little bit hidden by the really rude world where we're living right now, but we all have the we all have those values inside, and the proof is that as soon as you give something quite easy to make them up, they just come down. But obviously, critics, and I face a lot of critics, they always say stuff like, but the world is always full of people who will want to take advantage of nice people, and uh, as a result, you know, this structure is just never going to work. You're a utopian. What do you say to that? Just talk about figures. When we, when we have been creating Kiss Kiss for years ago, when we were searching some, some money, some funds for us, everybody told us that we were crazy, like children of EPs. And that was a new topic. Yeah, it was four years ago. Now, with the first numbers, I mean, in, in 2012, it was uh, close to $3 billion exchanging on the platforms. In 2013, it will be five or six thousand uh, billions dollars. And if you are reading uh, Forbes magazine, they are predicting hundreds billions of dollars in 2020. So, I mean, you don't have to give a lot of explanation except numbers. And those numbers are, are quite big enough to prove that the utopia is just becoming a reality. So what you're saying is that actually humanity is, it, it, we do have a chance. Yeah, I think <laughs> it's a proof that we've got a chance. Yeah, for sure. So, yes, uh, why don't we get the perspective now of the more traditional uh, banking, you know, I, I know you don't want to be represented as, as the voice of the no. old uh, finance <laughs> world, but... That's the way it is. Yeah, exactly. So, why are you more forward-looking, and do you think you're unique in, in the banking sphere to be this yeah, way? Uh, the, you said earlier that um, we did a, banks in general did a bad job in risk assessment, and that's true, actually, and that's where all the crises came from together and, and the trust crumbling down also. So um, what we wanted to do actually as La Banque Postale, which is a really young bank actually, because it was set up in 2006, um, from the lending perspective of a, of, a, of a new bank coming to the, to the market, is that we wanted to um, embody trust like no one. So uh, we set up really uh, simple loans actually, consumer loans, and then we just began to explore the new frontiers of lending, you know, and we we saw that crowdfunding in 2009, 2010 could be, you know, something new for our customers. So that's why we set up this collaboration with uh, with Vincent, um, and we said, okay, uh, this is a new way to to define the limits of what we can do for our customers first, because we know how to lend money, but not for every project. And we said you know, sometimes there is limits about that. And then we, s we thought, okay, we have one, uh, uh, sorry, 11 million customers, a customer base so, so huge that maybe we could use it, you know, to, to, do, to, to help people each other, actually, and to uh, encourage, you know, people to discover new ways to um, realize projects. That's what we did with Kiss, with Kiss, Kiss Bang Bang. We first set up this way to uh, channel, you know, uh, projects to uh, the platform, to uh, to uh, inform actually our customers that it was existing and um, yeah I think it's a pure collaboration. There's no kind of um, you're not an investor or a stakeholder no, or anything. No, like no, that. no, 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 no. It's, it's just it's, a it's you're about, you know, rooting it's customers. The, the speaker before us was, was speaking about collaboration in the, in the marketing way, the way to to address new markets, new trends, and this is the way we do it actually. That's why. Well, um, it's not about the future of banking per se, it's doing banking in another way. And maybe sometimes it's, it's easier to find new, new partners, just like Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, to do that. Because after all, you have so many clients, so many customers, that sometimes you have to address their new needs. And as you said, it's really growing need, it's really growing trend. So uh, instead of you know playing the, the old bank, you know, uh, stuck on the regulation side on their old habits it's maybe time to discover new things and that's why we do that partnership with uh, this is Bang Bang. So now I'd like to move on to uh, Francois's uh, business because it, for me it's perhaps the most interesting one because I'm I'm just fascinated with this development where you know I'm from London I'm from you from the UK so I watch British TV but we are seeing all these Dragon's Den type shows and equity is becoming something that is understandable now to the man on the street. Um, and you know, equity financing has been around for years. I mean, years, but now it's become mainstream. 
Is, is that what you're tapping? Yeah, that's one of the reasons we created an Exago. It's uh, bringing the possibility to everyone to invest in startup companies and small and mid-sized uh, companies. Um, in France, for example, the rate of savi savings is 17%, but these savings are not really risky, and a lot of people which are investing in stock exchange uh, invest in large companies where they cannot see the impact they have. They, they, they know that they invest a lot of money, that the stocks uh, have variation, but uh, they don't understand why. And more and more they see that it's because of, of robots. We could discuss that. Um, and we wanted to bring the possibility to these people to invest in companies that they can understand. They can understand that it creates jobs, they can understand the products, they can understand the markets, and they can see the company grow. Uh, it's risky, and it's not, uh, it's not in, this cons in the considerations of banking monopoly. It's more private equity, and we wanted to create uh, a bridge uh, for companies which, uh, who have a lot of difficulties to raise funds between 100,000 euros and 1 million euros. It's called the equity cap. And these crowdfunding platforms, uh, equity crowdfunding or crowd investing as we call it, uh, can add an actor to this chain and uh, motivate people to invest in startup companies who have a lot of difficulties to raise funds. And I mean, I always say, and I know the economists don't like it, but you know, equity is a form of perpetual debt in a way. So we're, are we going perhaps to this new world where everyone is a stakeholder um, we're financing through equity and um, you know and what are the sort of inspirational stories here I mean I, I come the one that comes to mind is the guy who did a graffiti for Facebook and got paid in equity you know is that the sort of world I, and and why not like if we, you're a freelancer we, be paid in equity we'd really like to have such a story on our platform but we cannot say <laughs> this uh, but it's it's the idea it's to to bring the possibility to shareholders to be also stakeholders or the country. Uh, it can be providers, clients, partners, and uh, as I said uh, at the beginning, we see this, we experimented this, and it's a real resource. They are the first ambassadors of, our, of an hexago, they are the first ambassadors of the companies who raised funds on the, on the platform, and we see uh, more and more startup companies uh, uh, coming to an Exago for this kind of financing. And they could raise funds uh, with classic actors, but they come here to find this thing, to uh, motivate their stakeholders to become shareholders. So in your experience collectively, to what degree do you think the financial uh, incumbents at the moment are watching what you are doing, and and even I mean I, I speak for you as well because you know you've got big competitors, um, and you know are they watching this area? Do they care? Do they realise that their entire business model is about to fall down? <laughs> about about for I'm not so that sure. That, that not, maybe it's, it's a matter of time perspective, but um, yes, yeah, they watch it, but I just I guess they don't really understand it. The the way when you watch how the this event works actually, it's all about trust building, relate, 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 and that's not the way banking is done traditionally. You know, it's more uh, a question about you know assessment, risk, and it's not about you know understanding the people, and that's. Maybe the, the main uh, switch is here, it's not money but people. And giving meaning to that, that money is all about, you know, you using something for others, <coughs> for yourself. Maybe if you're in corporation uh, for an equity, it's about, you know, uh, uh, using something good for you. And, well, giving meaning to that use of money, actually, it's really a new change. And from a banking perspective, it's not that easy to understand and to integrate, you know, in your day-to-day -day processes, and um, to be able to expand your promise to that area, actually, uh, meaning that you have to, to understand it, to relate it, 
and that's not the way uh, bankers do it. Well, I think it's a very important point. You're saying, you know, we're going to a more transparent model, and you know, we've come from a world of securitizations where God knows what's yeah. backing whatever. So, um, what? Uh, this point is really important, uh, transparency, and uh, I think uh, you can you can talk about it because you uh, projects on Kisti Bank Bank. I think have a lot of videos and photos. Uh, we are trained to do the same thing: transparency, a lot of transparency. Because if you don't, uh, if you can talk to these people, you are you are looking forward to invest in your company. If you uh, can if you can show your product, if, if you can talk to them, you, you won't, it won't be succe successful. I think there's three main factors. There's transparency, confidence, and simplicity. Uh, what I can tell you about the regulator, uh, uh, we worked a lot lately with the government with a phenomenon for uh, les assises de l'entrepreneuriat. I've been talking a lot with a regulator called ACP in France, the, the, the exact uh, same thing that SEC uh, in America. And uh, I, mean, I can give you one sentence which is going to summarize everything. They, they told us, okay, Yesterday, we were all of us, okay, all of you, uh, too little and too small to be above the radar. Now you're big enough, and I can tell you, you are above the radar. It means that for those regulators, especially in Europe, before they were, they were not laughing about what we did, but first it was so small that you know it didn't have any influence on their own business. Right now, it's changing, and uh, and uh, difficult things will start for sure. Charles, as someone who comes from the old banking world, what, what's your view? Uh, actually, now um, it's we're doing <coughs> 2 million euros in loans per month. It's only web, so some traditional banks does, doesn't do that. So You've got a niche, basically. It's, yeah, it's a scalability thing for you. Exactly, exactly. And uh, it's true, two years ago, I mean, People thought it was funny. It was a funny, funny platform with uh, uh, crazy colors or whatever. Uh, now they they're looking at this. Uh, I don't know what. But what is they, they you see, that's a very interesting point, and I agree. They did think it was funny. But even if we have the big names coming into this field, is there really um, an, a monetization opportunity for them? I mean, can they ever make it work? It seems to me. It is designed to be a smaller business model. So, what, Charles, and then yeah, go so on. So actually, I mean, our concept, um, crowdfunding, is a platform concept, meaning that what people are paying I mean, mm -hmm. regarding consumer loans interest, it doesn't come to the platform. It goes to other other people. Other Cutting out the middleman, basically. Exactly. And Which is why you know why would the banks ever want to be involved? Yeah, and for banks, I mean. So it's a different model. Uh, okay, you make less money, of course, but uh, maybe it's better for consumers. Yeah, but that's, uh, that's true, actually. It's, it's all about the consumer perspective. So you, you can talk a lot about banks, 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 but after all, they need customers, actually, that, that, that make deposits. And these customers, they need to relate also to this, to this new uh, uh, form of financial institution. You know, and to, to do so, actually, you have to be able to, you know, to give that, that, that investment or that deposit a meaning. And this, the, 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 the way to do that is that well, you, you need to um, open up a little the way you structure your financing, actually. So maybe you, you banks could run up their horizon to that kind of formula of financing, new, new funding. Because, yeah, it's, it's, it's a maybe a niche, it's maybe it's a niche market, but it's also some. There is a gap you need to fill, actually. And you can actually fit this kind of new product into a more traditional uh, product range, actually. You know, to, to come back on figures on, on traditional markets, uh, we know because we work together that banking system is watching crowdfunding, at least without the smile anymore. But at, for the disruptive markets, I mean, the, 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 the best number, or the best figures uh, come from this morning. I mean, Google just invests. Hundred million dollars in Charles Cousins in America called the Lending Club, which means that when you've got such a big company which is investing such a lot of money in uh, in uh, one of our platform, it means that this morning 
the, the view and the, 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 the point of view from everybody concerning crowdfunding platform is going to change starting today. Uh, we, we do not talk a lot about, about this when we, we are comparing uh, lending, uh, crowdfunding for lending platforms and banking. But uh, for me, the most important difference is that uh, there's no counterparty risk. And we talk about a lot, a lot about the crisis and why banking, uh, the banking system represents systemic risk. And uh, these crowdfunding platforms, there's no money creation. It's direct, and there's no, there's no, there's not the same risk. That's so it's a more robust system. system, basically. It's smaller, so we cannot compare for. For me, but uh, there's no counterparty risk. And that's because of the money creation side of it, because you're not uh, effectively no. creating credit. You're either um, drawing funds that are already out there, so 100% yes. funding, or um, you're raising it through equity. In which case, there's no, there's n there's actually no e exponential kind of. Yes. When the money lenders lends 100, uh, it goes directly to the the project and there's now 100 for from the lenders and 1,000 for so the it's project. It's almost like the system is reacting. It's not the same job, but yeah. there's no, so there's no risk. So the system is kind of reacting to, to the crisis by creating a sort of full reserve banking alternative in a way. The Google thing is very interesting and Google, I mean, you're basically arguing there is an interest for banks to be in here and they can make money from it. But perhaps there's, again, a scalability. Like someone like Google can draw scale from this sort of thing on a corporate level. But um, a small, smaller kind of local bank, I mean, you're either really directly in it on a peer-to-peer -peer level like uh, you, you guys, but the mid-tier middleman, I just don't see how it can ever be a viable model for them. Perhaps that's me, and um, I'm happy to be totally um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure where, if, if you talk about profit, actually. <laughs> um, uh, My mother always used to say, you know, if you pay peanuts, you get monkeys. So someone somewhere yeah. is, you know. <laughs> um, the thing is, it's, you, you have to assess what, what a retail bank do, actually. It has a, on a regular basis, you have deposits and you have lending, and you, you match, you know, maturities for the the the, the way people uh, wants to, to to have their interest served on saving first, and then you have to match the, the needs of the funding needs of of people, and that's what retail banks do actually, and maybe um, on um, on this hundred or hundred percent uh, deposit based on the model. Um, well, you, you have to uh, take into account the, the new way to look at the risk, actually, because actually the bank took all the risk for themselves, actually, and that's a new way, you know, to develop, you know, funding. And maybe that's if you take the perspective of the consumer protection, maybe you have something new to take into into, into consideration because actually it's it's really new, it's really fun, it's really growing, yeah, but in the same time. Um, we, we, the story is, as, is not um, really fulfilled yet because you will have some kind of accident. And so basically, we still need the old banks, and if if anything, perhaps because they provide infrastructure as well. There's a yeah, infrastructure yeah, I situation here. Yeah, I, I think. Of, of course, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I think you, you, we have this this uh, this problem of risk and scalability. You know. Um, we are like, like huge um, insurance bumpers, you know, to, to give the, some kind of boost to this market, to the market. Um, uh, the, the kind of structure we are actually, just like the Mont Postal, is a, like really, you know, can take the risk for themselves. I accompany, accompany actually the, the way the new, new, new firms to, to develop on this market because um, maybe the knowledge and the risk assessment is there actually, and maybe we can share actually this knowledge with that kind of new, uh, new companies. Francois, yes. do you have I'd like to come back to social motivations. And uh, we talked about anthropology. <laughs> and I think this is the main difference between 
the, project, the products which are made by banks for the moment, uh, even the mass products, and uh, crowdfunding platforms. We see from our clients that they want to invest in things they know. They don't want to invest in products and aggregated funds. And for me, this is the main difference. And uh, banks could do such things and propose uh, products where we can, you can see the companies behind the product, and it could be uh, something uh, they, could, they could think of. You know, the, um, our motto uh, at Avon Postal is Banque et citoyenne, so bank and citizen, actually. So uh, we know that our customer wants to have lots of trust and meaning when, uh, when they make their deposits into, into our accounts, and uh, that's why I, I think there is a lot of future for that kind of uh, model that is domestic, that is really related to the economy, uh, and uh, and uh, that's why actually we can set up new you know streets between some kind of these structures and, and us. So collaboration basically yeah, moving definitely. forward. I think generally, I mean, we we've had a good roundup of, of the main issues, but perhaps it'd be interesting to hear questions from the audience. Direct is it for everybody or yeah. anyone specific? take the retail perspective, actually, it's, it's uh, taking care of the people's money. So it's really about respecting that uh, first. Structure where we have redeemability, like a right to redeem, right? Yes. That sort of concept. So more, more, ba so lending based around an entitlement to use the particular good or service. There's a mix between, in this case, between pre-selling your products with uh, early adopter consumers, which in fact are becoming your fan base. So it's, I mean, the, the, the answer is that by pre-selling your project, by make, by make official that thanks to the people you're going to launch your product, you are creating a base of uh, emotional relationship between your fan base becoming your customers, which is uh, quite new. Although, uh, uh, as you can see on Kickstarter sometimes, it's exactly where sometimes problem starts. Because uh, as long as you are um, collecting like three, four, five, six thousand, ten thousand dollars to make a documentary or even to prototyping a product, I mean, you only have the responsibility in front of few people and especially people you know. When you start to pre-sell product like this on a large basis, and it happens, on, it doesn't happen in Europe yet, but in Kickstarter it happens like in once a month, then you've got two, three, four, five, six, ten million dollars which are collected. And then in this case, the question you're asking is a good question. Are crowdfunding platforms meant, uh, in this case, to uh, collect as much money on this uh, reward-based system? Uh, because it's like, from our point of view, most of the time, 
you will uh, bring the project creator to an amazing amount of problems because he was a prototyping uh, kind of people one day and the day after, 30 days or 60 days after, he is become an industrial. And then he needs to deliver thousands and thousands of, of, of projects. And then in between, this is one of the, one of the limits that we can see on our system right now, are those platforms really, really meant to build or to collect so much money for projects? In, and I think one, uh, one of the answers, it, it comes to, to an Axago answers, is like maybe when it starts to be really, really big, it should swift between donations to equity. Because then in this case, I mean, when you're filling a company with $10 million, is it really, really normal and convenient that it's only donation? And I was about to say that uh, for, uh, we, we, I haven't read such, such stories, but I think that when such companies raise $10 million, a lot of private equity investors come to them and invest equity to help them and build teams to help them to push the products that they, they have pre-sold. We'll see the future, we'll tell us about that. But there's, that's a tricky, it's a tricky space about crowdfunding, which is the only one, by the way. With a really, really new market, the only tricky space about our system are meant to this kind of project. Yes, we've seen this, and so we learn what can, what uh, the community prefers, considering projects. Uh, and it's also interesting for us to co-invest because uh, a large community s selects uh, projects, and it's it can be really interesting for private equity actors because uh, they they are used to take decisions in small committee like two or three persons maximum. And now uh, it can real, uh, we, yes, we didn't talk about it, but uh, uh, the market tests for these projects, uh, either for uh, capital raise or for uh, pushing products, it's a real important notion for me. The, um, the projects test the market and... Uh, we're kind of out of time, unfortunately. <laughs> Um, so, um, I'm sure the panel will be sharing their expertise throughout the day and can answer questions later, right? Um, but thank you very much. And, uh,